audience here. Um, looks like most of you have worked with SSIS in the past, a few newbies here, but um, I think uh, what we're going to go over and cover today, though, could be relevant to anybody who's been using SSIS for a while or if you're kind of just brand new and, and starting out. So with that said, let's dive in here and take a look at some SSIS performing tuning tips and tricks. So we'll start this out um, by doing a little bit of PowerPoint, going through some slides and going over some stuff, and then we're going to jump into some demos. So um, let's start out with some of our PowerPoint and going over what we need to talk about here. So first of all, a little bit about who am I. Um, so I have 15 plus years of SQL experience. I like to just say 15 plus because as that number keeps rising over these years, um, I like to make myself feel a little bit younger by just saying 15 plus. I run the uh, New Jersey SQL Server uh, user group uh, past chapter. Um, you can find my blog at anothersqlgeek.wordpress.com. I'm on Twitter at anothersqlgeek. Or you can uh, always email me at jphillips at pragmaticworks.com. So what should you learn today in this hour that we've got together? So what I want to go over is a little bit about what base components we should not use some do's and don'ts of source and destination objects. I'm going to go over some of the buffer cache sizes and default rows, get into some of the engine threads and um, debunk actually some myths that are out there about engine thread settings and SSIS, and talk a little bit about what's sometimes a better approach, an ETL or an ELT approach. So getting into our areas of focus, source and destination components is where we're going to start here. So we've got ODB, we've got ODBC, we've got .NET, we've got other custom source or destinations that can be made available by various other third parties as well as, in some cases, vendors that are out there as well. Now, you may or may not have seen the ODB was marked um, for deprecation by Microsoft. With that said, I'm not overly worried about it yet at this point in time. They've marked lots of things for deprecation over the years, and it's taken quite some time, and I think this is going to be one of them. Uh, and some of the reasons are going to be is because the performance, as we'll dive in and take a look at some of this today, of ODBC and .NET components just doesn't equal what you get of OLDB in most cases right now. So it's been marked as deprecation, but they're definitely going to have to do something else, probably on the ODBC side, to really up the performance before it's going to be able to go away. So you have your traditional ODBC, which has been around for a very long time. It's setting up your system DSNs and being able to point to that. We have our .NET components as well as .NET drivers. And there's some components in SSIS that will even require that, especially a lot of third-party components that are out there and available um, for you to integrate into your SSIS packages. You'll find a lot of them will require a .NET driver. And the reason for that usually is they're based off of .NET code and therefore they've been written in a way to work with a .NET driver to be able to take advantage of some features that are inside of those drivers that also don't exist on the OLDB side either. And then of course there's other custom ones available out there as well. And we'll do some demos on some of these to show some of the different performance on each one of them. So some recommended drivers to use as far as performance goes and speed goes. If you're working with SQL Server in general, OLDB is going to be the fastest and if it is a destination object, meaning we're writing our data into a table, you make sure you want to choose the fast load option as well. Um, basically what the fast load option is doing under the scenes is it's batching up the transactions on the inserts into the table rather than doing it row by row and doing single transactions on each row. If you're using Oracle at all or Teradata, I definitely recommend downloading the Attunity drivers from Microsoft. You can get it right off of Microsoft's website um, for SSIS. These are specific drivers just for SSIS. And they, have, they come in both for Oracle and Teradata. Um, they by far, as far as performance goes, outweigh any of the available ODB or ODBC drivers available on either the Oracle or Teradata, as well as they have some advanced options to them as well, especially when it comes to Teradata. Uh, being able to um, write the data using some of the fast load options that exist there as well. So that's just some recommended drivers that we would definitely want to use if we're using SQL, Oracle, or Teradata. 
So now I want to talk a little bit about some of the base components that exist inside of SSIS. And there's a list of a few that are really on my do not use or I just really say avoid using list. There are some cases with a few of these in here that we're not going to be able to avoid using. So the first one we take a look at is our sort. Now our sort object is something we absolutely want to make sure that if we can avoid using, we do, as well as aggregate. And the reason I put those two in the same bucket is because inside of SSIS, they are known as what we call fully blocking tasks. And what that basically means is that whatever sort we're performing or whatever aggregate we are performing, that com operation needs to be completed across the entire data set or basically all the rows that need to come through our SSIS package. They, the sort or the aggregate operation of performing has to complete before it can actually move on and go to any other object. So for sorts, for example, one of the things we can do if we're working with a more traditional database as our source of our data, we can actually write our SQL queries and put order by clauses in them and actually specify within SSIS that that data set is actually a sorted data set. And then we can say which actual fields are sorted within there. And when we get into the demos in a little bit, we'll actually go over and show um, how we actually do that for sorting. Aggregates in the same way, if it's possible to push the aggregate up to the level inside your query to be able to do group buys and do things like our sum and our counts, our mins and maxes and stuff like that along those lines actually inside of our query, we're also going to get better performance. Now, what a lot of people have said to me in the past here is, well, I've always heard that sorting or doing aggregates is the most expensive thing to do on a database platform as well, whether it be SQL or Oracle or DB2. And in general, that is true. It is an expensive operation inside of SQL, but it is even more expensive inside of SSIS. So sometimes you just have to weigh which is the better way to actually go with this, to do it in SSIS or to do it in our queries. Now, with that in mind, there are certain data sources that we can't do sorts or aggregates. For example, if we're going to be pulling data, let's say, out of a CSV file or a text file, or we're pulling out of a web service or something along those lines, we're not going to be able to specify order buys in our sort. So that's where I get in to say we avoid it if we can, but there's always going to be certain data sets where that's just not going to be an option for us.